<laughs> okay, so in this particular uh, deal here, we're going to be looking at aux channels and the things that can happen when using them. And if you are experiencing issues with being able to get the offline mixing, in other words, not in real time, I'm going to show you why that would happen when you're using aux channels. So in this particular song here, I've got just one little part here that I'm using my external sound canvas on, and this is an old Roland uh, MIDI module. Uh, I think I got it in the 80s, late 80s, and I've used it to record a string part in this particular song here. So what I want to do is I want to mix down my song. So I'm going to go ahead and I am going to make sure that my loop zone is in the right place for the mix down. I want to mix down the whole song and I want to do it in the uh, fast uh, option of uh, mixing down in Studio One. So I would just go to song and then I would go to export mix down. But there's a problem. <laughs> and what's happening here is I'm being forced to do it in real time. In other words, Studio One is going to play the entire song just to actually capture this external instrument. Now, it makes sense because it's not a VST instrument and can't be processed like one. So in order to get that part, I've got to do it in real time. But I don't always want to go ahead and do the whole song. Every time I want to mix this down to test a mix, I don't want to always have to do it in real time. That takes up a lot of time, especially if you've got like a five or six minute song. So let me show you what happens if we remove this track let's go ahead and say remove track and we'll remove the aux channel so now if i go up here and i go to song and i say export mix down there we go no problem now it's going to mix you know five or six times uh the normal speed so that it is processing everything so you can see what the aux channel studio one is smart enough to actually make sure that you understand that if you mix that down in quick time it's not going to read it's not going to hear the external instruments because it's not processing them it's being processed by the synthesizer itself so it needs to hear that in real time so let's go ahead and do this i'm going to undo and bring back those two channels okay now if i go to song and i say export mix down there we go i'm stuck doing it in real time again let me show you how to get around this. So for this particular song, I just have this one little event that's uh, being used with the sound canvas, just this little one right here. So the quickest way to get past this, and this is the only time that you have to do real time, but you don't have to do the whole song. I'm going to right click or you can do control B. I'm going to say bounce, and this gives you a new window here that maybe a lot of you haven't seen, and you see it actually created an audio track for this. So we're going to go ahead, we're going to make sure that we're coming from my 23 and 24 inputs, that's where the sound canvas is, and I can test it. There you go, you can hear it, it's that high strength. Alright, beautiful, so I'm just going to say bounce hall. Now watch. It is now rendering an audio version via the aux track. And, and it's going to stop. There we go. And here is the aux track. And let's see. I'm going to turn up the volume on it just so that we can see it. There it is right there. And we'll adjust this here with the pink here sound canvas. Let's see if we got it. this all right so now we don't have to worry you can see it automatically muted the midi track that was triggering the sound canvas so the only thing i have to do is i can right click and hide the midi track right click and remove the aux track and now if i go to uh, make sure that my loop zone is set yeah set for the whole song and if i go to song and i go to export mix down Boom, I don't have to worry about being forced to do real-time processing. So if you've had this, uh, this issue, that is the best way to solve it. Or if you don't mind listening to the whole song, then that's cool too. Maybe I know a lot of uh, engineers that actually use the real-time mix so that they can hear exactly what's being put to the file. So it's up to you. I've given you a little shortcut on how to actually create an audio track from that external instrument. 
or that external MIDI synth uh, in order to do the mix down process as normal. So uh, hopefully you got something out of this and I'll see you all in the next video.